What's up, good people? This is Neil Rio, your host, and this is the Apostate Apple broadcast. This is the first episode, and in this episode, I'm just going to talk about what this entire broadcast will be about. And I'm going to talk about who I am, why am I doing this, what to expect, and the value you can get from subscribing to the broadcast. So in a nutshell, this broadcast is all about exposing religion and the negative side of religion, particularly Christianity. And then we're going to talk about some forbidden things that religion didn't want you to know. So that's essentially what this is about. But before we get into those things... So let me get it right into it. Who am I? Well, my name is Neil. Neil Chester is my government name. I go by Neil Real. And um, I was born in Detroit, Michigan, USA. I was born in the 80s, so you can figure out my age from the early 80s. I'm a so-called foundational black American. I've been a web professional for over 20 years. I'm also an illustrator, graphic designer, and a visual artist. I was indoctrinated by religion from the age of five, and I was a member of the Jehovah's Witnesses, which is also called the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, which is uh, a Christian sect, and I was in that for 11 years. While I was in there, I served as an evangelist for six years. They call them publishers, but they're basically people who are authorized and knock on your door on Saturdays and try to give you a track or a magazine or something. I was also a Baptist Christian for four years. I was also a Pentecostal Christian for one year. And then I was also involved with the Evangelical Covenant Church for two years. I was also a Bible teacher for over 10 years. So I taught in homes, but I also had a ministry online. I had a website with sermons and, and a YouTube channel. In total, I was a practicing member of Christianity for over 30 years. So why am I doing this? Why am I making these broadcasts? Why am I starting this podcast? Well, this is going to be my story of how religion polluted my life, my spirit, and my mind, and how I'm trying to fix it. I'm going to be exposing the mental bondage of religion and all the errors within it. I'm going to have a saying that you'll hear me say often, and that is, there is nothing good in religion Anything that is good was copied from humanity. And I truly believe that. So I'm trying to save lives, trying to save people who are involved in it currently and suffering and they don't understand why this podcast might be able to help you. So why is it named apostate apple? Well, first of all, I'm an apostate. So an apostate isn't a person that has abandoned their personal faith In this case, I've abandoned Christianity and religion as a whole. And I want to be clear, I'm not an atheist. So an atheist is a person that says they don't believe in God. I think an agnostic says they can't know if there's a God. But I respect both communities. Uh, I do follow the atheists on Instagram, and they have these memes they post about Christians and certain things that Christians believe. I I think those are interesting and funny. But, you know, I'm, I'm not an atheist. The apple part of the the broadcast name represents the forbidden fruit in the Bible story. So we all know about Adam and Eve and they couldn't eat from from this fruit. And if they did, they would die. And many people see that fruit as a representation of hidden knowledge or occult knowledge. And so this podcast is about leaving religion, abandoning religion, and then looking into occult knowledge or things that was forbidden from you by Christianity. So examples of these might be spirituality, the occult, witchcraft, etc. Okay, now I want to be clear that I'm not here to lead anybody into any type of uh, belief system 
Um, I'm not trying to teach people to be spiritual. I'm not trying to tell people how, what religion they should follow. But are we just going to touch on things that they hid from us? That's all. If you're a Christian and you're listening, or if you're not a Christian, a lot of what you don't know was hidden by the church. So I'm going to have to expose it here. So how is religion harmful? First of all, before I go in, I, I do want to say this, that all religions are not harmful. And some spiritual systems are called religions. And so I don't want to knock all religions because all of them are not harmful. Some of them are simply spiritual systems and they help people and that's it. That's all they do. I'm specifically talking about any type of um, system or a set of beliefs that causes you to suffer, that prohibits you from being your best self, uh, destroys your knowledge of self and weakens you as a human being. You know, and puts you in a loop of suffering and pain and misery, which is what I went through. So anything that does that, I would say is harmful and I don't support it. So here's how religion harmed me. And, it, and I've seen it harm other people. It programs you to think and behave in ways against your best interests. So it alters your knowledge of self. Um, it may tell you you're not you're not worth anything. You know, the scriptures say that, you know, we were born into sin. We're all sinners, basically flawed people. It can lower your self-respect, lower your self-esteem, and even belief in yourself because it keeps telling you to believe in God instead of yourself. You got to put your faith in God and not yourself. And these have a bunch of consequences when you do that. So what it did for me, along with things I just mentioned, was I put God in ministry above myself and my needs. So there were times when I was spending time helping somebody or working on a project for the, for the Lord, quote unquote, and my needs weren't being met. It made me a follower instead of a leader. So that's not good. As a man, you got to be a, a leader, not a follower. But religion tends to try to put you in that position. One of the biggest issues it caused for me was isolation and disconnection from other people. So my first Christian sect was the Jehovah's Witnesses. I was born into that. They would isolate you if you did some kind of sin or whatever. So they, they call it disfellowship. So they would cut you off from your family members. They couldn't speak to you for a short period of time or designated time until the elders of the church or the congregation would allow it. Your own parents could isolate you within the home and punish you and put you on punishment by disconnecting you from the rest of the family and your friends and anybody else you want to hang out with because you didn't want to do certain things within the religion. In those times, you, you, you lose your social skills in some cases. You get used to isolation, but you hate it at the same time because you want human connection, but you don't know how to get it because you don't have the skills to actually connect with people. A lot of problems came out of the isolation and the disconnection. And of course, the religion says that we're no part of the world. The Jehovah's Witnesses teach that and they always quote that and they say that. My mother said it often. We are no part of the world. So only time you would talk to somebody that was not a Jehovah's Witness is a person that was not a part of that cult religion was to evangelize to them. Anybody else... You say hi and bye, but you don't get into deep conversation with them. You don't make friends with people who are not Jehovah's Witness because they are of the world and we're no part of the world. So that was the thing. And I kind of took that same thinking into other Christian religions that I jumped into. So Baptists and, you know, things like that. I can only connect with people within this religion. And so when I left, I still had that program running. So now I don't connect with people within the religion and I, I don't connect with people outside of the religion. So this program running where it's hard for you to connect with anybody now because you're outside of the religion and you feel this program to not even talk to people who are just regular people walking around. Like you need human connection, but this this program that, that keeps you from doing it is it's difficult to really explain. But I think people can understand what I'm saying. So that's something I had to fight and I'm fighting that now, learning to have open conversations, to generate conversations with people that I can build a connection and, and perhaps a friendship because we all need friends. We all need healthy human connections. It also cut me off from positive interactions with women. And the reason why is because they always was trying to monitor young people from having sex. I remember getting a number from a girl in my 
church. And he found out and told me to tear it up and not to call her. And I found out later on he was saying he did it because he didn't want me to have sex with this particular girl. But what it did was it prevented me from learning basic interactions with the opposite sex, particularly girls that like who had a mutual affection. It was okay for us, my brother and myself, to interact with girls that didn't have any type of liking towards us, friends basically. But when it came to a girl that that had some level of desire beyond just friendship, that was chopped off. So I don't know how he was watching me or monitoring me, but he found out some kind of way and that screwed it up because you need to have positive interactions with the opposite sex when you're young so that you can build those skills when you get older. And so a lot of negativity came out of those relationships like that being prohibited and cut off. I wasn't even thinking about sex at that time, but here comes this religion trying to block it. And so Sexual repression is a big deal within Christianity. People find that they can't even have sex properly or enjoy it because of all the teachings that they had stuffed down their throat. Lust or desire for the opposite sex is 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 frowned upon. Masturbation is frowned upon. You can't even do that. That's that's the sin. Certain sexual acts within the bedroom are considered sin. So they really got sex locked down, messed up, jammed up for anybody that's within these religions. And there's a lot of people suffering because of that. Another thing that they do, religion does to harm you, is it disconnects you from your emotions and your intuition. So you may feel like something ain't right, but you can't act on it because religion is saying to put that aside. Don't think on it. Don't think that way. Or if you feel some type of way, they will invalidate your emotions and tell you not to feel that way. And so these are all mechanisms that protect you. And so then now they're programming you to remove the basic protections you have for your spirit, for your mind. They're getting you to remove those. And so that may happen through Bible scripture where a pastor is teaching something. It may be people within the church who are abusing their power or their position and trying to get you to do things. And they'll use a passage to say, you got to do this or do that. And then when you retort with, Hey, this ain't right. I don't feel right about this. They'll try to manipulate you into, or gaslight you into doing whatever they want you to do or whatever. So it's, it's a mess. It's very harmful when it comes to your own self defenses against bullshit and and harm within the, the religious organization. So another thing that it does is it emasculates you. It it seeks, particularly Christianity, seeks to emasculate men. There's tons of passages that that get men to go against their basic energy, which is masculinity within their their, their, their spirits. And so I I realized that religion was instrumental in, 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 in lowering my masculinity. Aside from what was happening in the world. Media does it. Schools do it now. It's it's everywhere. It's these programs trying to get men to be less of a man. So, you know, it goes against your will to fight, which is connected to masculinity. It led to two of the biggest regrets of my life. The first one was destroying all my artwork. And I did this because of religious beliefs. I thought that You know, these things represented my past and they were not of God. So therefore, why should I keep them around? But I believe everybody should keep a record of who they used to be. And I discovered later on, none of this stuff was wrong. But here I've, I've destroyed 10 years of artwork, illustrations, things that were that represented me, that that was expressions of who I was, a record of my talents and gifts and abilities. All these characters, all these, this artwork, all of this stuff that was me, I destroyed it because of beliefs from religion. So that was a big regret of mine. Um, The second regret was getting married to the wrong person. Religion will cloud your judgment and it will also lead you to do things that's just not in your best interest, as I said before. And getting married at the time that I did to the person that I did was the worst decision I ever made. And... Even when I had these pushes in my spirit to not do it, it's about two and a half times when I really had the unction not to, to even get married, to just get out of that situation. The, the religion just came back in and just pushed me back into it. 
to where I ended up getting married in seven years of, I guess, misery, I would say, seven years of um, emptiness, all because of religious beliefs. Within religion, it allows for a lot of parasitic or narcissistic personality types to thrive. Okay. So because of that, and I didn't know anything about these type of people, I was, I was taken advantage of by those people. And anybody knows anything about narcissistic abuse, you know, that that is a really, really tough thing to deal with. And it lasts for years and years and years. And you have to work through all the knots and twists and and cuts that they did to your spirit. And so I'm recovering from that as well. And I would say even religion in itself is narcissistic, particularly Christianity is a narcissist. It's a big, it's one big narcissist. And then finally, bitterness, resentment, once you discover it was all a lie. And that's what I did. I discovered that and I was just devastated. Like, you know, damn, Jesus never existed. There's no proof of him. The Bible was plagiarized. So basically, a lot of these stories are copied from other stories that were way older than the Bible. The Bible was never meant to be literal, but allegorical. And they decided to just teach the people as if it was literal to control them. This is all a bunch of bullshit. Now, I respect the Bible because there's good things in it. It's a good piece of literature, but there's a lot of stuff in there you shouldn't even follow or do. The treatment of women, not helpful for your soul, not helpful for your soul at all. So that is what religion did to me. And I've seen this done to tons of other people. I was a part of uh some groups called the recovering from religion. And you could hear their stories. They're countless stories of, they might've been a Mormon. They might've been a Jehovah's witness. They might have been a part of some other denomination within Christianity or some other sect, just damage, 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 damage. Once again, there is nothing good in religion. Anything you think is good in religion was borrowed from humanity. Okay. And my goal with this podcast is to expose all this shit. I'm going to go in on religion because I don't want anybody to fall for these traps anymore. I want people to have an open mind and a thinking mind, a critical thinking mind. And that's why I'm doing this. Now, I, I, I don't want you to feel sorry for me and just empathize and understand the dangers of religion. This is a trap. This is something that's designed to hinder you, destroy you, cause you misery and to prevent you from being your best self in my opinion so here's the deal what can you expect from this broadcast well expect stories expect psychology to be used within these broadcasts so i'm going to be quoting psychologists and psychology research to show you the, the damaging effects of religion on the mind okay respect church history Heavy criticism of religion, particularly Christianity, of course, and the Bible. And once again, I'm not I'm not pushing you to a certain path. I want to show you what's out there. What what are the alternatives? So and, and I'll be dealing specifically with the Abrahamic religions that includes Christianity, Judaism and Islam. I have no understanding of Hinduism and Buddhism and anything else out there. And I don't even think those things are even actual religions. They may be spiritual systems or whatever. But nevertheless, we're going to stay within the Abrahamic religions and, and discuss the damages in the belief systems within there. Here's what you can get out of this podcast. Here's the value. If you are a believer, you'll get a perspective on why people leave God. Most of you are already told why somebody like myself left God. You'll say that. He was never of us, you know, and he went out from us, but he was never of us. No, I really believed. I really believed to the T. I was a better Christian than you. You know, you're going to get my side of the story. You're going to get the real reason why people leave. So you're going to get alternative answers to questions you may have about religion, uh, life and the Bible. Instead of the cookie cutter answer your pastor is going to give you or whatever you're going to find on a website that you did a Google search for. So if you're doubting your faith or have left your faith, you'll get a sense of support, sympathy, and connection because I'm in the same boat you were in. 
if you've never been religious, you'll learn all about Christianity and its dark side. You'll get answers to questions you may have about church behavior from somebody who is probably on the outside looking in like hypocrisy for one. Why are Christians hypocrites? You know, I'm going to talk about that. And it's not what you think. Why are they so against sexuality? They hate masturbation. They don't want you thinking about sex. They try to tell you what you can and can't do in the bedroom. They hate homosexuals. They hate lesbians. What's up with that? We're going to talk about that. And then finally, you're going to get forbidden knowledge, stuff that they didn't want you to know. Uh, Kundalini, chakras, witchcraft, Wicca, the depths of things that they don't want you going into. We're going to dig into it. We're going to go all into the darkness and bring out things that they said you couldn't look at. Tarot cards and astrology. We're going to touch on these things because it's um, important to understand and, and know what's out there. Once again, I'm not trying to tell you to join up or practice any of these things, but just to know what's out there. Have a whole, a well-rounded view of the, of the world instead of just this one narrow view of what religion is telling you. Okay. Finally, I want you to know this, that Christianity in particular was forced on people. They may tell you the story of the Bible where it was just Jesus who came out of the Israelites and he preached love and and he healed people and no first of all there's no record of him doing any of that or even existing somebody decided okay we have to get this religion pushed on people so how do we do it we going they came to people's countries they had a sword out and say look you're going to love Jesus today with a sword to their neck and say, if you don't like it you're going to get killed some people got burned at the stake that's how christianity got spread it wasn't Jesus and his disciples and the apostles. OK, none of that stuff happened. That's what the Bible says, which is a fictitious book. Another thing I discovered was that the Bible was meant to be allegorical and not to be taken literally. OK, so there was no two nude people in the garden talking to a snake that didn't happen. OK. The Bible was plagiarized. This is something else I discovered. So the Mother Mary, virgin birth, Noah's Ark and the flood, these things come from other stories that was older than the Bible itself. And they just kind of remixed it and put it in the Bible. And once again, there was no proof of Jesus is, you know, Jesus, Moses, Paul or any other of the Bible characters that actually existing. So until next time, be blessed, rate, like, share, subscribe all that good stuff thank you for listening to the end and continue to the next one